Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, again to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel. We're going to continue today with this series based on the book of Revelation. Before we move on, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Pastor Barry, please. Father in heaven, we thank you again that we can open your holy word. Amen. We humbly bow our hearts before thee, asking for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from the Holy Ghost, who teaches us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. Father, grant that the Spirit of God now will guide us as we search the scriptures. Amen. We thank you for this opportunity to share with those who are listening. Now bless Amen. them and bless us and grant the Spirit of God may speak to all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Mr. Barry, let's go ahead and try to finish up this message of love, rebuke, and warning that the faithful witness has been brought to us through the uh, letter to the church of Laodicea. And I want to pick up with uh, Pastor Barry. If you can go ahead. Uh, we, 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 we have still been talking about, we've still been trying to bring the remedy because we know our condition. We talk that, that nobody, no human being can be saved unless it's, if it is by God's grace coming to our heart. But the question, I believe, is that we have to uh, bring to our friends and to ourselves, remind us, is once we have received Jesus, once we have been partaking, become partaking of the grace of Christ, is there going to be any change in our life? Does the Bible speak? It, let's be more specific. This, um, this issue of re the grace of Christ is, te is, is given to you by the uh, simple, uh, in verse 18, when the Bible says in the second half of this verse. Of Revelation says, 3? Of uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse okay. 18, it says, okay. and anoint thine eyes with eye salve. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the word anoint is very interesting. If we go to 1 Samuel, chapter 16, we read about an issue of anointing. And we want to see what is connected to anointing. 1 Samuel chapter 16, I believe. Notice what the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16. It says here, verse 13, Then Samuel took a horn of oil and anointed him, talking about David, mm. in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Amen. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now mm. anointing is connected directly with the Spirit of the Lord. Mm. Mm. So when the Bible says, anoint thine eyes with eye salve, it is talking about you and I receiving more of the Holy Spirit mm. through the teachings of the scriptures that we might discern. Mm. Only through the Spirit of God can we have discernment. Watch mm. a little carefully again. Go with me to Acts chapter 10, verse 38. In Acts 10, 38, Jesus was anointed. Look what the Bible says about him again. Let's see again what anoint means. The Bible said in Acts chapter 10, verse uh, 38, the Bible says how God, look here, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the what? Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Mm -hmm. So anointing, the uh, anointing what? Thine eyes. What eyes is he talking about? He's not talking about your physical eyes. He's talking about your spiritual, spiritual eyes. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, <coughs> the eyes of the righteous are in their head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is talking about your mind. Mm -hmm. To give your mind spiritual discernment. Mm -hmm. Notice what else the Bible tells us about this issue. So we find that the Holy Ghost is the power, is the anointing oil that you would need 
to receive for your ISAB. ISAB is the ability to discern. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Okay. Ephesians chapter 1, okay. verses 18 and 19. You have it? Yeah. Can you read it for us, please? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The eyes yeah. of your understanding. Where does understanding take place at? It takes place in your mind. Mm. So therefore, the eyes of the righteous is in the mind. But the eyes of the righteous is the mind, and it's the eyes of their understanding mm. being open. And what gives you the understanding being open? The Holy Ghost. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs and, uh, and Psalms, one, uh, 119, 130, it says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. Mm -hmm. It giveth understanding to the simple. Mm -hmm. And so we find that God's word is the, gives us the understanding, but it's the spirit of God that gives us the discernment that we can rightly divide what we understand. Yeah, and he will lead us to all truth. Yes. The Holy Spirit. Yes. So when we be anointed receiving the Holy Spirit, by leading us to all truth, and we haven't even started before, That's the right. truth is what? The truth is Jesus, His right. Word, the <laughs> commandments, and the Holy Ghost. All His commandments. All right. His commandments. Okay. Look very carefully at 1 John chapter 2, mm -hmm. verse 20 and, 20, 20 and 27. Look what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, 20 and 27. The Bible tells us again here about this issue, and uh, it's very interesting. In 1 John 2, 20... Can you read that for me? 1 mm -hmm. John 2.20 says, But ye have an unction, an unction. Now, from another, the Holy One. Another, another word for unction is also like anointing. Mm -hmm. And ye know all things. That's right. Look very carefully. You have an unction from the what? Holy One. Holy. From the Holy One, right? Mm -hmm. That says Holy One there? Yeah. Or Holy yeah. Ghost? Holy One. So the Holy, the one. Holy One. And what else did it say? And ye, shall, and ye and know all things. And you know all things. And then it says in verse 27, it says here, But the anointing, Mm. The what? The anointing. the anointing which ye have received of him. Right. Now, what is this anointing, anointing that you receive? It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit right. that gives you spiritual discernment, which is mm. called ISAF. Mm. Are you with me now? Understanding. The understanding. So we can see the truth. And you can see the truth, but you can also discern between good and evil. It is the wisdom and grace of God is given to you that you can discern both good and evil mm. from but the help of the Holy Ghost. It says, but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. Now, it doesn't mean that no man can teach you, but you don't need no man teaching you that is not anointed, mm. right. that does not have the Holy Spirit. Right. It says, but as the same anointing, look, teaches you what? All things, and is what? Truth, and is no lie, and even as it is even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide where? In, in him. him. Mm -hmm. So we find here that this ISAB is spiritual discernment, and it's the Holy Ghost who has, has anointed our eyes, opened our eyes to, give, to take away the blindness, the darkness, that we can see clearly what the Word of God teaches and discern both good and evil. Mm -hmm. Because many people say, okay, um, I have listened to your programs, through national radio, national TV, or, you know, newspaper reading it. But I still don't see the truth of the Sabbath, let's say. Mm -hmm. So what happened? What really are they saying when people say, okay, I, I, I hear it, I read it, you know, I, can, I, I see what you're saying, but I don't, I, don't, I don't see that that is the Holy Spirit has not convinced me of the necessity to obey, you know, let's say the fourth commandment. Some people are waiting on some type of revelation from God, like mm -hmm. us feeling. Mm -hmm. Others are waiting on some type of, uh, they want to hear it from a minister mm -hmm. sometimes. But the real issue is that many people have heard the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. on several different occasions and have rejected his message because it does not suit their traditional view and custom of things. Mm -hmm. And God is not in your traditional view. God is not into your customs. God is into truth. Right. 532, Patrick, would you read it? At the book of Acts, chapter 532. Because I know this is a, an issue so important, so vital. Many people say, well, I, I know one thing. I have the Holy Spirit. And nobody 
can uh, take that away from me. Well, but let's see, because our hearts is very deceptive, right? Mm -hmm. All of our hearts. So that's the reason that God has been giving us, you know, the truth of the everlasting gospel, as we have been speaking in previous program. What does the Bible say? I'm going to start with verse 29. Okay, 29 then. Peter said unto, Peter and the other apostles answered the religious leaders and said, right. we ought to obey God rather than men. Mm -hmm. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him mm -hmm. hath God exalted and with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. So to whom is the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, been given according to the Bible? It's given to them that obey him. But remember, you, you get the Holy Ghost by asking for the Holy Ghost. Right. But in Luke eleven thirteen, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, mm -hmm. how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to them to ask him? Now, you're asking for what? For the power to obey. Amen. The Amen. power to, and also while getting the power to obey, he's going to guide you into all truth, and he's going to teach you, and then he's going to show you things to come, and mm -hmm. at the appointed time, if you are studying to show yourself approved, he will bring it back to your remembrance when you Amen. need it the most. And, and, and Jesus on his love, you know, in the book of, and the message to Laodicea, he's presenting himself as knocking on the door. Is that knocking on which door? The door of our heart. And why is he knocking in there, on the, on the heart? Because in the Laodicean condition, he's the answer. And if he comes in, they will receive his righteousness, his faith that works by love. And maybe because he knows that us being inside, inside of our own self, inside of our own pride, inside of our own, you know, traditions, inside of our religious belief, he's desperately knocking on the door. Well, he's desperately knocking because if, he don't, if you don't let him in, he said, I'm going to spew you out my mouth. The question is, how do you get in Jesus' mouth? How are you getting what? How do you, and I, how do you and I get in Jesus' mouth? Oh, okay. Go to Romans 10, um, go to Romans 10.10 10 with me. Okay. Romans 10.10. 10. In Romans 10.10, 10, the Bible says this. Now, it's very important that people realize that something happens with the mouth, with the mouth okay? In Romans 10.10, 10, the Bible says here, confession, what? Confession. Confession, for it says, for the heart of man become believeth unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Amen. So we get in the mouth of Jesus by confession. And now, when we confess, we are witnessing, isn't it? Now Jesus, of our faith. Jesus said, whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. I hold that thought. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. So, Pastor Barry, mm -hmm. what is, uh, you were talking about, about the book of Romans mm -hmm. in relationship to what we're dealing now with the Laodicean right, because we were remedies. Talking, we were talking about how do we get in Jesus' mouth. And I gave you Romans 10. And when you start mm -hmm. verse 9 and 10, it says, If thou, will if thou shalt confess with thy mouth mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We get in Jesus' mouth by confession. 
Jesus has said, whosoever be ashamed of me and my words, him shall I be ashamed of. Now, I'm sorry, whosoever confess me before men, him, shall I, him will I confess before my Father and before the angels in heaven. Revelation 3, 5, look what it says there. Revelation 3, 5. It says, he did overcome up, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Mm -hmm. And I will not blot his name out the book of life, but I will what? Confess, confess his name. Now, who's, who, who, who's going to be in Jesus' mouth? Him that what? Overcome. Overcome it. Overcome. All right, I will confess his name before my Father and before the angels. So mm -hmm. we find here that we get in Jesus' mouth by confession. But we can only stay in Jesus' mouth if we overcome. Yeah, that's the condition. That's the condition. That's the condition. So the Bible said to him that overcometh. Overcome what? Overcome the Laodicean condition. Okay. Overcome the lukewarm condition. Overcome wretchedness. Mm -hmm. Overcome self-righteousness. Blindness. Uh, overcome <laughs> blindness. Overcome oh. pride. Mm -hmm. Overcome the love of the material wealth of this world. Mm -hmm. And overcoming worldliness. Overcome sin. Yes. That's, that's what it is, right? Yes. It's Overcome true. because... Sin the, in its various aspects that lead away from God. Okay. Uh, Brother Patrick, you've been kind of a quiet... Well, Jesus promises in verse 21 of the Laodicean church, right. to him that overcometh, right. will I grant to sit with me in my throne? Yeah, be, be, before we get there. Okay. There uh -huh. is one thing that we need to do first before we get to... Uh, that condition to overcoming. We need to be willing and able, it says right there, to open the door. Can Jesus open the door for us? According to Revelation 3.20? Can, 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 can he force? Can he force and say, you know what? I'm going to save this whole world. I'm going to save, you know, this child of mine. Regardless, can he do that by force, open the door? No. What do we see in here of Revelation 3.20? One thing he does is he knocks. Right. And a knocking is when we hear and we're convicted of our own sin and, we're, and Jesus is calling us to turn from sin. That's a knock at the door, to turn from sin so that he can come in. And the power, with us. yeah, the power to open that door. Is that on Jesus' hand or the the Laodicean, all of us, the Christians, hand? Because he's knocking. He's waiting for what? Look at this. Uh, pay close attention. If any man, and he's talking about to individuals, that's the reason that we should remind ourselves and to our friends out there that it's not by a religion that we're going to be saved. It's not by a denomination that we are going to be saved. It's through that relationship with Christ. To the and truth it, of God. And to the right. truth. And, and it's truth. Right. If any man hear my voice, any man, anyone out there, including ourselves, and open the door, pay close attention. He's not saying, I'm going to open the door for you. No, no. We have to listen on the knock. And as Pastor Barry mentioned, a couple of minutes ago, he's always through the Holy Spirit calling us. But because of pride, because religious prejudice, because of family, because of friends, because of interest and other things, we don't want to open that door. Then, then he, he says, I will come into him. So the first two things is belong to us. Listen to the voice. And he's always calling us, isn't it? Always. Because he wants all of us to be saved. Yes. Um, Jeremiah 31.3 says, mm -hmm. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Right. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Amen. Revelation said, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Right, right. So he will come in. And he will sup with him, and he with me. He, he wants to dwell. It, it's, it's, a, it's a dwelling relationship. Right. And, and where do we remember that? About the sanctuary, isn't it? Make me a sanctuary so I can dwell among you. Dwell among my people. So, and, and that's the reason that we expose in love, you know, the a counterfeit work 
that the devil has been trying to establish on this earth. A counterfeit, you know, priesthood, a counterfeit uh, religious system that they say and teach salvation only can be obtained through us, through our church. And, and that's not what we see in the message of Laodicea. Not only that, Jesus knocked on the door of the church members as well as the people of the world. Mm. Now, for the church member, in Acts chapter 14, mm. verse 27, the Bible says, And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith mm. unto the Gentiles. So when Jesus knocks at the door, he's knocking at the door of faith, the door of your heart, because your faith begins in your heart, in your mind, mm -hmm. with what you believe. If you believe in Jesus and you, are, and, you, and you believe that Jesus is your Savior, then because he does not want to spew you out of his mouth, he knocks at your door. He's knocking at the door of your heart, and your door for him is the door of faith. Mm -hmm. But now for people even outside of the faith, Listen carefully. In 2 in Corinthians uh, tw 2, 12, Furthermore, when I came to Taurus to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. Mm. The Lord opens opportunities mm. right. for people. He prepares us to make opportunities available for people to receive the gospel who have never heard it, as well as those who claim to believe it, hmm. but at the same time are missing great truths of the Bible that they need to understand. In so order for them to overcome. They overcome. So therefore, he says, behold, I stand at the door. I'm knocking on the heart of those who are the door of faith, and I'm knocking on the heart of those who are not of my faith, but I'm giving you an opportunity to hear the gospel that you might gain faith and that you might receive of my righteousness. And, and of course, the, the, the word gospel nowadays has been so misused and misunderstood. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, uh, the Revelation 14, 6 and 7 speak very, very clearly. It's the truth of the everlasting gospel. Because uh, in every age, that there have been a special truth. And the special truth that we need to hear and preach at this end time is the truth of the everlasting gospel. Now, yes, Brother Patrick. Jesus says, I will come in to him uh -huh. and will sup with him. Supping means to have a meal together. Mm -hmm. And Matthew 4, verse 4, Jesus, Jesus says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jeremiah wrote in Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Mm. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Mm. And Jesus, that, yeah. Jesus sups with us through the word of God. And in the book of Revelation, John actually eats the word of God himself. That's right. That's right. But it's interesting to note, too, that because of this, Jesus says, oh, I have sent to a knock. And then he says, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me on my throne. Wow. Now, this is a promise that's given to the last generation, the last church on in the, in the period of the seven churches, to sit with Christ on his throne. Well, how can you sit with God on his throne? What is the throne, what is in the throne that's going to allow you to be able to sit with Christ on the throne? Mm. If, you go to, if you go to Revelation, go me in your Bible for a moment, to Psalms 89. Let's, let's, look at some, let's look at some things about the throne right quick, right? Okay? okay. One, I want you to see this for a moment. The Bible says here in Psalms um, uh, 89:14, the Bible says what? Justice and judgment Just are the habitation of thy throne. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. The habitation mm -hmm. means foundation of the throne. Mm -hmm. When you overcome and you sit with Christ in the throne, you're sitting at the foundation of his throne. Mm -hmm. But you can't sit at that foundation unless you experience justice and judgment. What's another word for justice? Go to uh, Psalms 97:2. Psalms 97.2. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. So notice now, what is the habitation or foundation now? Righteousness and what? Judgment. Judgment. Mm -hmm. Question. Before you consider the throne, God sent a message 
that's going to have two things in it, righteousness and judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see for a moment. Are we, true, are we sure about that? Let's go to, let's go to Proverbs 16, 12. So let's see something about the throne again. I want to see something if it's coming from the throne. We're going to see. Proverbs 16, 12. Somebody read that for me right quick. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. The throne is established by what? Righteousness. righteousness. And the Bible tells us all his commandments are what? Righteousness. righteousness. And then in Proverbs 9, 7, Somebody read that for me and tell me what, the, what else is in the throne. It says, He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. He that rebuketh a wicked man. Proverbs 9, 7. Yeah, getteth himself a blot. Okay, I thought it was supposed to be, uh, that Proverbs 9, 7, where it's supposed to be the throne is established in judgment. Oh, okay. Okay, but anyway, the Bible shows the throne is established by righteousness and what? Judgment. Right. Now, question. In the Revelation 14, you have a message. Oh, it yeah. says, what? Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his what? Judgment has come. Now, judgment is a, a message of judgment is given, mm -hmm. but was a message of righteousness given? In Revelation 14, 6, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto the dwell on the earth to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Right? Mm -hmm. right. But the everlasting gospel has in it what? The, right, the power of God, which is the righteousness of God, which is by what? Faith. Right. So God sends, the, Jesus stands at the door and knock to offer to the believer and to those who are not of our faith, what? Righteousness, mm -hmm. understanding the receiver of his righteousness, and understanding that they're now in the hour of what? Judgment. Judgment. Because they're to see a meant of people being judged. Mm. So he stands at the door and knocks to bring them the message that can clothe them in the hour of judgment so he will not spew them out of his mouth. Wow, that's powerful. Praise God. With that, I will have to start closing. Uh, my friends, all we have to say to you is, you know, through Jesus, we can overcome. I know there are many gospels out there. Social gospel, ecumenical gospel, econ uh, you know, prosperity gospel. But we are bringing to you, by God's grace, the everlasting gospel. And if you adhere to those truths, and we adhere to that, for sure, we're going to become overcomers too. And until then, may God bless you all, and we're going to keep studying with you through these messages through Revelation. May God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel. P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.